to the last night of Dice Tower West. This is the best my voice has been. We're doing this list tonight. I'm playing the sympathy card today. All right, I'm, I'm Tom Vassal. I'm C, I'm C. How you doing? I'm Chris Yee, back in Las Vegas. I'm Colin Cleghorn. I'm Mike Delizio. All right, so we're glad you're here. We're gonna do a, I'm gonna sit down now. We're gonna do a top five list here tonight for you all because there's five of us, 25. I'm sure we'll get that done in a cool 30 minutes. <laughs> just like we do online. Yep. Um, today we're talking about the top five things we're tired of. Now, this was very open-ended. Very. <laughs> it's never happened before, Tom. It's true, I gave you guys almost no... He was being sarcastic. Almost no? <laughs> None. I know, I rolled my eyes too. Number five, Chris Lee. <laughs> <laughs> Don't copy my list. Uh, it doesn't say who. So, for the most part, this is lighthearted. It oh, should be lighthearted. I need to change my list. <laughs> Not all of mine are, but most of mine are. Mm -hmm. But these are things that we just thought we would vent about here, if you're all willing to hear that. And I bet some of you will agree. This is a safe space, right? Safe space. No, I want you to go tell the publishers when we're done. This is coming right off of the enemies of gaming list, so I'm, this is a lot of, I'm gonna need a positive list here very soon. We just recorded one. That's a good point. All right, so since this is a negative list, we're gonna start off with Mike. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> oh, we need a, we need a number, Chris. You, you, Eric's not here, so you gotta do the number. Number five. <laughs> All right, well, my number five, um, let me paint a picture for you. You've play, you're playing a hotly contested game. It's been a well-played game, and everybody is right there at the end, and you know it's gonna be close. A couple of points are gonna separate the two, three, four of you. You get to the end, and you find out it's a tie. Oh, oh. Let's consult the rule book. What's the tiebreaker, folks? Oh. It's a shared victory? Yeah. Do better. Come on. Shared victory? That is so lazy. You've got to come up with something. I don't care if it's, you know, Rochambeau. You've got to do something. There has to be a resolution to this game. So my number five is shared victory high conditions. Shared, shared. Nope. Nope. I'm nothing. I brought you a different mic, just in case. That joke is gone. <laughs> no, try try the joke again. I'm not doing it again. Do the joke again. Fine. <laughs> Monkey. <laughs> shared victory gets hugs. Oh. That's the joke. See, it doesn't work anymore. <laughs> It's dead. This is really hot, this mic, right? Yeah. Oh, there's another mic. They brought a lot. Don't cut the mic. Thank you. Okay. Are we moving on? Okay. Right, my number five is one that keeps me up at night. I really despise this. It's like to paint a picture in the words of Mike Delisio. You go to Target and you're excited because you see a two for one sale. So you get the game. Right? And then you take it home. And there's stickers on the box. <laughs> so infuriating. You can't get them off. Gugon ruins the box. Taking them off rips the box. What do you do? I don't know. You don't sleep at night. That's what you do. We might be done in 30 minutes. This is like a, a clapathon. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I paint no pictures. You're playing pandemic. Mm -hmm. I'm there with you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're playing pandemic. Yeah. You're shuffling in the six or the five epidemic cards you're going through, and you realize you forgot to pass out the starting cards to everybody. Uh, uh, yeah. 
That's just, we're getting real petty on this list. <laughs> like, real specific and then, yeah, okay. This is, uh, my, my list has to be very petty, but this is, when Tom said the name of the topic, top five things we're tired of, I went home that night, played Pandemic Rising Tide for the first time with Wendy, and we did this exact thing. I said, that's on the list. <laughs> All right, so my number five. Let's get fiery. It's too, it's too quiet in here. So everybody's too calm. Let's no, pick it up. No, I'm tired of these things. Let's get fiery. My number five is a game rule book that has the setup on page ten. or some crazy thing, right? And you know what's before those pages? Lore of your game <laughs> that you made up. And, and it's usually the most generic fantasy garbage. It's like, in the land of Generia, the elves <laughs> like to paint, but the goblins hate art. Ooh, it's, it's just garbage. Save it. Put it at the back in the little extra pamphlet with your lore so I can throw it away. Whatever you want. But the setup needs to be pretty early on. I'm leafing through this thing just trying to figure out is I mean, get to that dumb step where the board goes in the center of the table. You know, just, just go right to it. Let's go. So yeah, setup that starts way too late. Not a fan. You gotta get it early. That's my number five. Alright, number five, let me make sure, yep, okay. I, I like, you know, miniatures and like art, I like, I like those games that have that sort of thing in them. And this is starting to go away a little bit in our hobby, but it still drives me absolutely nuts when it's not this case. So you're a board game company, and you're like, let's have miniatures in our game. That's fantastic. But, you're not going to let the person who sculpts your miniatures communicate with the person who draws the art on the card. <laughs> so then I have to sit there and spend 20 minutes and I said, hey, this guy has two daggers. This guy in the picture has one, this miniature has one dagger. I think they're the same person, <laughs> but I'm not sure. That's and right. then the miniature painter goes, oh, 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 so then, I'm tired of you too. <laughs> two for one. I love it. Yeah. But I mean, there's no reason for that. Like, like oh, well, the art's different than the miniature. You get two different pieces of art. You're a moron. <laughs> Match them. It's not that hard. And yet, so many games, it's frustrating. I sound more frustrated than I am. It's because you sound like an old man shouting at class. I sound like one of those tears. Please stop. <laughs> Alright, we need number four. Number four! That's good. Audience participation. My number four is uh, also, like Z's, related to rule books. I know that this is a, a hill that I increasingly am dying upon, but rule books have issues in, in many cases, and, and one of the things I'm tired of is I understand that you want to inject theme, and you want to reinforce the theme that your game is trying to come across. That's great, but how about in the rule book you use actual English words and not use ridiculous thematic language to describe things that we all understand. Okay, we're gonna, this is what you have to do. You, you, for your fortitude action, you're gonna raise, then you're gonna quell, then you're gonna intensify, then you've got liveliness and unity. What, draw one card and then invoke it. With two essence. Well, up to two. How about telling us what everyone knows? Draw. You know, play a card. Put this cube on the card. Make it clear to us. This is, this, this is the same rule book that you're talking about with Generia lore. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> In Generia, everybody quells. That's right. <laughs> By the time I get through with this, I'm vomiting. I'm, you know, that, that's the thematic thing that I'm doing. So anyway. Use language we understand as gamers, please. I always put a picture of Android Netrunner. Because that's they use different terms for the different sides. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's it's yeah. It's like reading Dune and you have an entire, you know, encyclopedia in the back of these new words that they've made up. So Huh? Dune? 
<laughs> we are I'm pandering in, with them. I'm in the wrong audience. That's my number four. Because my number four, I got over the stickers ruining the box, right? Finally, I got a good night's rest. I woke up in the morning, I processed it. I'm like, here it is, I'm gonna play the game. So I take it out, take a deep breath, I start punching it. And guess what happens? It rips the components. Uh, like, That's just where one. This is, this is, you have yeah. a story through your I do, I do. Oh, You're gonna go on a journey with me tonight, guys. Right? It'll be great. It's not my therapy, it's yours. Uh, yeah, so uh, rip your opponents, what is this? I would happily pay an extra two dollars for the game to know that I can punch it comfortably. This should be therapeutic. I enjoy punching, I enjoy organizing. I she want definitely to enjoy punching. Absolutely, I'm the first one. Big It's true. Uh, <laughs> but I enjoy this, I enjoy it. I like organizing my new game. You know, it's, like, it's an emotional investment, right? I, I researched this game for, for three months, I watched the reviews, I got excited. Nobody talks about the components that you need to take twice the time to punch them. Whoa, 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 you. <laughs> I'm not about Chris, Chris is in the punchy zone. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Bob and Weave. So my number four, give me a punch board I can actually punch. Yeah. 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 For my number four, I want you to imagine. See a picture. Paint a picture. <laughs> no, I refuse. <laughs> oh, okay. You know, I want you to imagine a fantastic uh, poster for an announcement for a game that you're so excited about. Maybe it's based on an IP that you love. Maybe it's just some little teaser image that looks so good. And then it says, coming to Kickstarter 2025. <laughs> it's too early to announce that. You're not the MCU. I don't need your six phase plan. <laughs> If you give me an invitation to your baby shower, and you're not yet expecting... <laughs> Chris, I'm going to need you to disregard some mail that you'll have in here. <laughs> four is very simple. It's one word that seems to be continuing to creep and creep into our hobby. And I have no problem with this word. The word is meeple. But it's just everywhere now. At first it was cute. Carcassonne, meeple, miniature people. Aww, that's adorable. And then you get meeple town. Okay. Meeple circus. They, they even went to war. Meeple War. That's a game. Okay. And then, very recently, just like when you, you know, your uh, number five was inspired by a recent event, I played Frostpunk, which has an incredibly dark theme of trying to literally survive a, an apocalyptic event. And the rule book and the cards use the word Meeple for, like, Starving survivors that are trying to not freeze to death. Wait, is this the opposite of Mike's? Yeah. I guess so. I wanted to say, like, person, survivor, something. Not meeple. That word doesn't mean anything. That's a gamer word. It's like an inside joke word. You can't just put meeple on the card that says, three kids are starving. Uh, you can only feed one. When you decide which one, remove their meeple. <laughs> no! No, you can't do both! You know what bothers me too is the eeple in meeple comes from people. Yep. And yet we get a sheep and they're like, that's a sheeple. Meeple. <laughs> what does that even mean? Right, it's supposed to be a meep. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get Tom started on the jeeple. 
Jeep Wolf! I was a big fan of the Jeep Wolf. That's the dumbest term. <laughs> also, properly a beep. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I agree with you very much. Thank that. you. I don't get a hot bell or that's the other. Also, if you start a podcast, you should use the word meeple. Anyway. <clears throat> uh, no <laughs> um, okay, well, this one is one. I, I, again, I'm confused by the miniature not matching out. I'm confused easily. If, I'm glad that we have created whole a whole industry of box inserts. That's great. You know, I don't know why we need it. Well, I do know why we need it. Because so many games come and you punch everything out and you're like, okay, how do we put this back in the box? Uh, I have no idea. There's a round circle in the middle and every piece is square. <laughs> now you all, many of you, if you're new to gaming, you don't remember Mayfair. Mayfair, they used the same insert for everything. It was very confusing. You'd be like, there's like a thing for cards, but there's no cards even in this game. <laughs> But lots of companies do this. I remember, I, I couldn't find it, Earth Reborn, uh, from Z-Man Games, who's here? Oh, no, they're not here, so I get to make one of them. Earth Reborn, um, you punch out all the pieces, I was like, I don't know how to fit all this in the box, and then the insert, and people posted that on Board Game Geek, and they were like, oh, that's like a puzzle, that's fun. <laughs> no! <laughs> I hate that so much. And tied with this is making me Tetris it back into the box. Yeah. Look, I get many boxes have too much air in them. There's a middle ground. You know? <laughs> and when I have to sit there and spend time and placing a bunch of coins down in that thing, <laughs> and then they all snap out of your fingers, <laughs> and you want to punch somebody. <laughs> yeah. Which happens a lot in our group. Mm. Um, <laughs> Anyway, just tell me how to put this up back to the answer. It's not that hard. And don't put it on the side of the box. That's stupid that we have to pick the box up and look at it. <laughs> I'm okay with it on the I side of the box. I disagree. I disagree. I disagree. I disagree. I'd rather have I that than advertisement for other games. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, number number three. Yeah, now we're getting into it. All right. So in most games, they're going to have a game board. I mean, not always with card games, but in most board games, you've got a nice rectangular board. You can kind of expect that. The edge of that board is most often used for what? A score track. You know why? Because it makes sense. <laughs> because it works. When game companies want to get fancy with their score tracks, Many times it fails miserably. So my number three that I'm most tired of are these weird, funky score tracks where they're snaking in different directions. They don't necessarily fit the pieces that are going to go on them. And you've got four players, and they have to all stack four cubes, and they're falling over. And it's like, okay, is this going snake in this way, or is it going this way? I'm, oh, wait, I hit, a, I hit a crossroads here. Which way do I turn? Oh, wait, okay. Uh, just put it around the edge of the board. It works! It works for a reason, and so they want to get cute, they want to get fancy, they want to get funky. In the case here, they want to get ugly. Um, <laughs> this is, uh, I think, prosperity, actually. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it might be a moment, right? Um, this is a ter I'm sorry, that's a terrible scoreboard. It's terrible. Uh, the cubes are too big for it. Anyway. Stick, stick to, to usable scoreboards. Put them right on the outside of the board. That's, that's what they're there. That's, the, that's what the edge of the board is for, by golly. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> by golly. <laughs> that was definitely what was up here, for sure. Darn <laughs> too. <laughs> by gum. <laughs> All right, for my third uh, session here tonight, I want to talk about I made it through the punch boards at this point, right? <laughs> I opened the box, made it to the punch boards, processed it, I'm to the rule book. I've even made it to page 15 to see the setup. Nice. Yeah, thank you, thank you, yeah, a lot of progress. But then, I'm trying to figure out the difference of the components. And guess what? The rule book doesn't help. I don't know, what's the difference? Is this a paladin? Is this a raider? Is this, I don't have any because you don't tell me. I don't want a list of it. I can read it. Show me. I need pictures. You know what? Consult Ikea. 
They're great at it, all right? Give me pictures, I need pictures. What am I looking at, what goes where? Don't make me guess. So my number three, three thank you. Thank you, Delicio. You my number three is rule books without pictures to help me understand how to set it up. I don't know the game. Don't make me guess. That's your job. Teach me. Mm. I thought about this, but I didn't put it on the list because it enrages me. Yeah. To the point where I almost I want to rip it through a book. I mean, that's, 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 that's not going to help. <laughs> <laughs> I, if this is criminal. If you do this, I hope your company goes out of business. You're a bad person. <laughs> sure. Let's go there. Because you ever know? Come on. Okay. I'm going to pull back here. Let's get fired. <laughs> <laughs> just joke. You know, Freedom of Breeze is listening to this and thinking to himself, <clears throat> I'm going to design a game with nothing but a pictorial rule book. Mm. I'm there for that. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. All right. My number three is, uh, I think it's related actually quite a bit to what, what Mike said earlier, but mine is specifically when a company decides to get really cute and mix up the terms turn and round. What about step? Oh, step, Power phase, grid? era, any of those, those things tend to have pretty understood meanings and when you decide that it's really cute and you want to mix them up and it makes my learning of the game suffer more, I don't like you. <laughs> you turn to they go out of business. I hope worse, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I th oh, I could go. That's another top five list time. <laughs> Next year. So my number, uh, my number three, turn versus round. All right. My number three is has been touched upon a little bit, but it is specifically for me dumb inserts. Okay, the kind of insert that yeah, I can figure out where things go. <laughs> I know, I know where stuff goes, but you do things like give me a stack of cards that I can see, clearly see where they go, but the finger hole to get the cards out goes halfway down the space for the cards. What were you thinking? I mean, what's the logic here? Like, give me hope, but then, ha <laughs> ha, you gotta turn it over. I'm really confused about that motivation. When they molded that vacuum molded insert, you immediately see that the finger hole does not go all the way to the bottom. It's, it's very apparent. So no one thought, I have a human an anatomy question about what's going on right here. Nothing? No? And then you have something like that also, which if you, you can see clearly everything's just floating at the top. If you remove that cover, like that, that, that insert from the inside, I feel like Jules Verne in, in, you know, Journey to the Center of the Earth. Like, so much room under here. Look at the most world under here that's not being utilized. Why? The insert is keeping all this space from me. Make it all the way to the bottom. What's it matter? What are you scared of? There's nothing under there. I do not get it. Dumb inserts. Bane of my existence. Mm. All right, this next one might just be me. I'm a big fan of fantasy and sci-fi, and I like just those things in games. I, I really do. And I accept that in, like, movies, there's very popular sci-fi franchises, Star Wars, Star Trek, etc. When you make a game, you might do the generia thing. Yeah, I like it's orcs and stuff. But then when companies are like, okay, so we made our world, we want to add characters to it, who are we going to add? And you make a sci-fi game, for example, you're like, you know what, let's make this guy, we'll name him, you know, Spook, instead of Spock. <laughs> or Morty McFly, you know, with a, and I like... <laughs> Dr. what? <laughs> and you know what, the first time that's funny, but how many Spocks are there in sci-fi games at this point? How many Star Trek red shirts? How many Wookiees? It gets really old after a while, but it just screams that you were lazy and you're like, oh, I don't know. You know, some games, that's all the characters. 
every character in it is a parody of sci-fi or, or fantasy. And again, that's, that's fine to a point, but it's getting old. I'm getting tired of it. And yes, I know, Simon, you know, it's all like they're all stretch goals. I mean, they were putting U.S. presidents in a game for crying out loud at one point. They ran out of things to parody. Everybody wants a Gerald Ford man. <laughs> <laughs> That's one. It's all about OP. Oh. Gerald Ford is OP. I don't know. I, just, I find that to be really kind of lazy world building. Yeah. You know, and, and lots of games, games I like, like Clank in Space. I'm like, That's fun, but half the cards are just, oh, this is Alien. This is this. Make up your own universe. And then give me 16 pages of lore. And then call it Generia. <laughs> Generia. Lands of Bravania. Alright, are we ready? Go. Number two! I'm so spooky. <laughs> My number two is related to uh, crowdfunding. Alright, and uh, I'm sure many of us have perused a crowdfunding campaign or 12 in our time. And uh, increasingly, it's, it's uh, well, it's been there for a long time, but I think that uh, even more so recently, the companies are stretching a little bit for, pun intended, for those stretch goals, right? And so I'm getting pretty tired of these stretch goals that are clearly absolutely worthless and nobody cares. Things along the lines of, hey, here's a CD. Okay, this is an older one. But I don't want a soundtrack. I'm sorry, I don't. I don't want a soundtrack. I don't really want art prints in most cases. I'm kind of, I don't care. I don't care. I want something more in the game. And the worst defender, what do I have up there? Oh yeah, that's another soundtrack. The worst defender will have the next slide, in my opinion. I don't like these stupid box sleeves. Usually, the box sleeve is uglier than the cover itself. I, I feel like no one's with me on this one. I don't like these stretch goals. I think they're, I, I think that they, that's okay, I don't, I don't need the sympathy class, but I really, I'm so tired of these, I feel like most of these stretch goals are like, okay, we gotta do something, what are we gonna give them at 120,000, I, I don't know, I mean, can you like play the ukulele, let's do a song, can you? Yeah, I, I, it, they, they don't really add much of anything to these games, and I, I almost always throw away the box games, hate the box games. So, there you go, my number two. I'm getting, Z doesn't, Z doesn't agree. You're a monster. No, I'm with you, Mike, I'm with you. Yeah. Box leaves are stupid. Box leaves are the worst. You agree with that? Yeah. Why don't you give them another hug? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, number three. 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 What? Oh, no, no. No. Alright, my number two comes at the end of the game. You play the game, you learn the game, you love the game. And then you get to the end, and guess what? There's a mini game, and it's called scoring. <laughs> Everything scores. Absolutely. Every, yeah, y'all got quiet. You saw a game. Was there a picture of Phil? Okay. <laughs> Everything scores. If you're the highest in this, you get points. If you're the lowest, you get points. You want a trophy? You can have one too. Everything doesn't need to score. Let me know in the beginning of the game how I score, and I'll whip you. I don't know. Why is that a big deal? Just let me know how to score, and I'll figure it out. I don't need to score everything. I don't want your pity points. I'll take the pity points, to be clear. You can I'll have the pity points. points. And you'll still lose. Oh. 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 Maybe you guys can trade the sleeve for the pity points. I'll do it. Yeah. I'll do teamwork. it. Teamwork. That's teamwork. We'll play co-op. So, for my number two, uh, last week we did our top ten enemies of gaming list in which Camilla decided that for some reason one of the most egregious and offensive things in the world is, people. is ugly games. No, I was like number eight. Come on, don't be dramatic. <laughs> to be fair, Chris, yours was children, so I just want to... <laughs> to be clear, young children. <laughs> and parents. <laughs> My number two thing that I'm really tired of, and I'm a defender of many, many, many ugly games. And if you make an ugly game, it's fine. I get it. But my number two is making an ugly second edition of the game. <laughs> the only one that looks worse than the first. <laughs> oh, oh, the crowd's yeah. like, I love it. I want the other They're like, yeah, Cole Barrett. Wait, what? <laughs> Certainly not. 
Libertalia, Winds of Someplace. <laughs> Generic. Winds of Generic. <laughs> I had the Winds of Generic once, it was no joke. <laughs> Took me a good two weeks. Yeah. Bad weeks happen. <laughs> you make an ugly game once, shame, shame. on you. You make me buy a second edition of an ugly game. Shame on I hope your company goes out of business. <laughs> That's right. Dude, it's been too weird for me, honestly. It's dark. <laughs> Shut your factory doors. <laughs> I don't know if I can go on. <laughs> Alright, I'll go on. My number two is pretty simple. It's a, a fairly straightforward thing that we see, seem to be finding more and more frequently in, in recent games, and that is campaign-only games. <laughs> Come on! I just want to play your game. I don't want to have to marry it. Just let me play! I don't care if it has a campaign. That's cool. You want to give me lore? Great, I love lore. <laughs> 16 pages of it. But that, when that's the only way to play, and then I have to commit to a whole thing, and it's, we, okay, we gotta do it next Thursday, guys. It becomes a, a work. It's like, I gotta go over. I gotta go over to so-and-so's house and play this game. We have to. I mean, what, what if we don't finish the campaign? You can't just play a one-off. If a game gives me both, I'm cool. That's great. No problem. I can do it, not do it. And in fact, I might even be tempted to do it. More so if, you, if you're saying, you know, choose your thing. But when that's the only way to play, no. I don't know what I'm getting into. It, you know, some games now are advertising, you get a hundred hours of play. Like, that's a good thing. <laughs> no, no it's not, because since it's linear, that means I'll probably not see the last 60 hours of it. Like, ever. I can't pick a scenario. I have to start at the beginning every time. You design, because let's be fair, it's probably a Kickstarter, and mm -hmm. I, I don't know how much those things are tested at the end, but you designed a bunch of scenarios that a lot of people are not going to play, because they start from the beginning. And I just don't get that logic. Let me pick where I jump in. Let me play a one-off, I enjoy it, it's great, da-da-da, and I'm out. Are, are some campaigns okay? <laughs> I think campaigns are fine when Again, I have the option to jump into one game, and that's it, on its own. That's cool. Okay, I can get it. Like what? What are we thinking of? <laughs> Pandemic Legacy. That's a legacy game. It's kind of a different thing. The whole gimmick is, it's a one-time event. I'm trying to trap you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm trying. Objection. Very good with this. That is definitely leading, yeah. Yeah, no, I think the legacy is okay. There's no other way to do it. But many games don't have to be campaign games. They're just like, we can do it. People seem to like it. Let's do it. Let's promise 150 hours. That's my two. Stop it. All right. And if you do it, I hope that your company... <laughs> my number two just happened to us today. Okay. Um, look, I know that every piece of your game costs money. So you're trying to conserve money by, you know, not putting in too much stuff. But look, you know, we live on the five pennies and a nickel, two nickels and a dime, or whatever. And if you've ones, fives, and tens, or whatever, but if you've ones and fives in your game, and you have it for five players, and you put 24 ones in that game, I hate you. <laughs> because anytime you get, oh, here's three ones. Oh, we gotta make change. Who's holding all the ones? You are, let's make change. And everyone's making change the whole game. <laughs> And then there's those games that do it so much, and they give you that hundred coin, and as soon as you get it, you gotta pay a dollar in taxes. I'm like, no. <laughs> I refuse, I will not break this. So if everybody watches you take that hundred, there's a single hundred in there probably. And as soon as you take it, everybody's like, oh, oh. <laughs> oh la di da you got a hundred. It just became the biggest target. I like, but I like the coin thing, and I just don't understand why you can't put like 40 of them in mm -hmm. and not the exact amount, forcing everyone to make change every single, that's so annoying. Yeah. And then, on a side note, those little five time resource pieces, does anyone like those? Oh. They suck! Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Get it out. Get it out. Get it out. So for those five pieces, and you put a piece on it, right? It's like, okay, the wood. Now, do you have five wood, or do you have six wood? Right. It's an existential question, folks. Yeah, it's true. There is no wood. No one uses it, right? Okay. Like, no one uses it. That's true. Or, or even better, when you have 20 nice pieces, and you're like, just in case, here's five more wood, but these are cardboard tokens. Those are cardboard. Yeah, yeah. No. yeah. I, I'm just not going to get wood in that case. How about that? All right, here we go. <laughs> Guys, it's end finally. And finally. Number one. Number one. Let's let's use that good effort. Yeah, yeah. So spooky. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I hate to do this, but my number one is a crossover. Oh, come on. <laughs> It's a crossover with one Mr. Z Garcia. That's right, baby. And I say, oh, come on, I meant, yeah, yeah. All right. I just wish it was one of the ones that you were very, uh, had a lot of crowd support on, but apparently. <laughs> Look, campaign games are fine. <laughs> but seriously, what are you trying to prove here? <laughs> What are you trying to prove? Okay? You could put whatever numbers you want on that box. I don't want to spend a lifetime playing the same game. I don't mean, you know, the same one you like, but the exact same game, the same... This is getting ridiculous, right? And I get that, you know, not every game is campaign for North Africa, but that's a real thing, by the way. That's a real thing that came out of BGG. The, uh, I can't speak to the veracity of the aging. I think that may have been Photoshop, but, um, but come on already, I get it. It's almost like a dare now. It's almost like, you know, these games are almost like those uh, hot sauce TV shows. It's like, yeah. how long can we make the game? How long can we make them play this one? Mm -hmm. Settle down. Here's if, the good news though. If you design one of these games, you don't need to play test the end. You don't. <laughs> yeah. No one's playing. You'd be like, oh, that's a big monster, the boogity boogity boogity. That one got me though, the boogity boogity boogity, that one. Yeah, that, one. <laughs> yeah, that one got me like three different times. So yeah, so my number one, I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm just tired of these super long campaigns, right? I'm with you, if you give me a one-off too, that's great, because then I might actually play your game. But if it says it's going to be 40, 50, 60 hours, I'm out. It's also intimidating, that's it the is. If a game is only campaign, right. it's so scary to sit down that first time and be like, okay, here we go. I'm, I'm making going, a commitment. I don't know what I'm getting into, right. you know what I mean? It's like I'm going to Neil Lane before, I'm getting a, I'm getting a ring. I'm like, okay, I, I, I'm going to make sure this game likes me. Right? Yeah, yeah. you can test it with a one-off, a one-shot, Right. then I can jump into a campaign, cool. Mm -hmm. That's my number one. of gaming, so I'm throwing some heat at something I'm tired of. Roy? <laughs> Feel the heat. Roy? Um, no, my number one is BGG. And I'm saying, I know, hear me out. Hear me out. Actual shock. Actual shock. I am so A man is going to need... This is not BGG's fault. This is publisher's fault. That's where my heat is. But I'm tired of having to go to BGG because I don't understand your rule book. Or because, I don't know, uh, you didn't give me pictures in the rule book. You should have yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. If you're a BGG, you should be out of business. <laughs> sorry, Aldi. Goodbye. <laughs> That's your job, to make a game and give me a, pu a, a player rate. Not to go to BGG, and where you write me an apology, like, oh, sorry, we used to win it in play testing, but then we figured, like, you know, we do a, I'm filtering, <laughs> uh, a half-done half job on the rule book, so you don't need a player rate. And none will be the ones. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so yes, just give me the player rate. Don't make me go to, don't make me do your job or someone else do your job and then we go hunt it down. No, do your job the first time. Put the player in. 
That's it the is. problem with BGG is that it's like when video games were finally able to get patched after they were out. Right. And the publishers of video games were like, we'll just release a patch. We can put this out now. Uh, that's mm -hmm. right. You know, back in my day, you got the cartridge, baby. You got the cartridge. It all needs to be on the cartridge. Right. So now, I am tired of having to go to BGG so someone else can do publishers' jobs. Mm. Yeah. Right. Also, BGG. Also, BGG is a big BGG. Huge problem. My number one is uh, is a little bit more people focused than you know, on the game itself. Is it us, Chris? It might be some of the people in this very room. Oh, if it wow. is any of the people in this very room, I'm not going to use the business going out of business joke again. <laughs> but you should reevaluate some things in your life. <laughs> if you have ever used the phrase very snarkily, that's not a heavy game. Mm. Oh, yeah, all the people that groaned, you're in the clear. Mm. There's, I'm so tired of the judgment. <laughs> yes, love it, a great joke. It's been a long week, I forgot that they made these pictures. <laughs> I gotta keep it out. And their names first with the people. <laughs> it's my old podcast. <laughs> <laughs> There's just so much, and, and Camilla, you mentioned this in the in the enemies of gaming. And it might, it's true. Yeah, just that that judgmentalism. You know, anytime that we say oh, top ten this type of game, well, it's not really that. <laughs> it's not a heavy game. It's not this, that, or the other. Let people enjoy the games they like. It can be so many different things. And then go close your back. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, close your back. Yeah, no, that's a good one. That's a good one. And that, that constant need for things to become more complex. Everything's a stepping stone to something else. Nothing can just be enjoyed. It's like, I need another heavier game. Just, or, or you could just en enjoy where you're at. Not everything is like a leaping off point. And worse, it's like force feeding. It's like, oh, you like that game. We'll never play it again. Yeah. Here's this hundred hour campaign. Let me show you something here. Yeah. 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 All right, my number one is unmarked expansion stuff. I buy all this stuff, I'm excited for your expansion, I get it, I shuffle it in, all the cards, all the tiles, what have you, and then I want to teach it to someone new. And I gotta jump in there, like I'm Sherlock Holmes, looking for the tiniest differences. These are slightly taller, let me remove them. I think the, the backs on these are lighter. Oh, the linen finish is a, a slightly different pattern. Mm -hmm. I gotta remove these. How many came in the expansion? 15? I only have 14. I gotta dive back in. <laughs> Just put a dot on there or something. Give me a little line, a little letter in the corner, anything. It literally blows my mind that I am still coming across these. Look, the first time it happened, I get it. You, you weren't thinking about it, you know? You thought, oh yeah, hmm, we didn't think to mark them so you could undo this. We just figured it's so good you'll always want it in. <laughs> Hope you go out of business. Um, but by now, no company should be dealing with this, you know? It, 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 come on, you have to mark the expansions. We need to be able to take that stuff out if we want to, if we hate it, if we just don't want that flavor in the game, if we're teaching to someone new, which is usually the case. And I just don't get it. And if you do mark it, tell us how you did it. Right. Because sometimes I'm spending a while going, what is it? They're like, well, there was a crinkle around that circle. <laughs> oh, it's like those, what's spot the difference games? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's insane to me. So. And the biggest offender of this for me was definitely, I think it's what's up there, Abyss, the first yeah. Abyss expansion. I finally just took a sharpie to it, and I hate to do that. I'm not someone who does that. Not number one, I'm tired of people marking my game. That's right. <laughs> yeah. 
also BGG. All right, my number one here, we're going to do a little bit of an inception. Okay. Because my number one is a top ten list that I've been threatening to do for a really long time. What? I told you guys I was going to do this at some point. I forgot that. I wasn't there at the time. So my number one thing I'm tired of is annoying gaming groups. And I've ranked them. <laughs> These are the top ten most annoying gaming groups. Wow. Wow. Okay. Because I think these people make the hobby of worst place. Now, I'm going to probably call out every single person here. I'm not talking about you. By name. Absolutely. I'm talking about your friends. Here's someone who, Here's a group that didn't make the list, though. Because I considered it and I thought, no, they're actually pretty nice. So, train gamers, you're good. Up and going, baby. Up and going. You guys, go, I don't necessarily want to play a lot of games with you. The, like, you sit there for five hours, it's cool, but you're polite, you talk to people, I like you, you're smart, well mannered. <laughs> Good for you, trained people. <laughs> Number 10, teach you. All right? Teach you players. I thought you said teachers. <laughs> <laughs> what, is, what is these things? Teach you? Teach you, like card game. teach you is a trick taking card game, and the people who play it will invite you into a game, beat you senseless. <laughs> for losing, <laughs> and then release you into the wild. That definitely happened to me. That was right. The first time I was caught. Yeah. Yeah. Number nine is our newest entry on the list, and they're about to play after this game here. That's Boy. the blood on the clock tower, people. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we get it. It's a new game, and it's better than every other social deduction game. Shut up already. <laughs> we had some the guy sent our awards, and I'm not going to name this person, oh, although they do run a cruise, mm -hmm. who nominated Blood of the Clock Tower for Family Game. And Cooperative Game, and Two Player Game. Look, I, I'm sure it's a fantastic game, probably. But it's like, oh, every other game is dead to us. We're playing Werewolf, you fools. <laughs> You're not helping the hobby. Number eight. People who, every time we mention a game has an app, are like, we hate technology. <laughs> Look, we get it, you don't want to use an app in your game. Guess what, there's like 40. Go play the other 8,000. <laughs> but stop telling us every time. We're like, oh, I don't want to do game. What? That was the name of that boss at the end of the 140 hours. That's right. <laughs> Number seven is the people who, for some reason, need to tell me how much they hate Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> I get it, you don't like Marvel, that's fine. There's like 30 Marvel games. There's 600 trading in the Mediterranean games. You're still winning. <laughs> yeah, you're good, keep, keep going, don't look at me. <laughs> Number six, Sleevers. Look, Sleevers. <laughs> Games. That's fine. But I'm tired of you screaming at publishers like, how dare you not include room for the dragon sleeves from the set? <laughs> because most people don't sleep their games. But you throw inserts away, so what do you care? Let us sleep. You know, I don't sleep. Just stop running for us. Oh, you don't sleep your game? No, I have seven children. All right. <laughs> That's fantastic, but not every game needs to be solo. Like, oh, just one. It's it has one in the title. There should be a solo variant. <laughs> no. Ooh, did 
we can have these groups fight afterwards. All right, number four. Where are we at? Oh, well, this one's been around forever. The Heavy War Simulation Gamers. You're cool, we get it, and you don't want anyone else to play your games. Guess what? It worked! <laughs> We got what we wanted. For 20 years from now, that was not going to make sense, kids. People used to play war games, but they didn't want anyone else to. All right. Number three, people who pretend publicly and loudly to hate art in games to defend crappy games. They'll be like, oh, I actually like the fact that this game looks terrible. <laughs> if I'm being confusing, I'm talking about splatter fans. Yeah, yeah, here we go. Yeah. And every time we're like, oh, I wish this game looked better, like, I like it that way. <laughs> really? <laughs> you just lie to, 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 to justify your game. Liars. All right, number two. I'm gonna be a little bit more specific here. Oh. Lacerda fans. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you why, and this is true. Go online and read the thread where Chris and Wendy recently reviewed uh, Weather Machine and see what jerks some of these people are. You chase people away from the hockey when you're like that. Yeah. Someone plays a heavy game, you're like, oh, you don't like that? What's wrong with you? I mean, I'm, th there's a lot of joking here, but I'm serious about that. Yeah. Uh, my, dad does, my dad doesn't understand to get the ride. And I'm like, Dad, come on. That's okay. He, he at least understands just one. You know, like, <laughs> but that's fine, but, you know, and I'm, I'm talking about just the Saturday fans, but heavy Euro games in general, don't be a jerk to other people. And it's very tiresome to see that. And it happens online a lot. Mm -hmm. yep. And number one, and this one is here in this show, and it's fine, I guess. Cult of the Future. Yay! There's prototypes there, that's fantastic, but there's also a library of 8,000 games. And I'm like, hey, did you play Earth? I'm like, oh, yeah, but you know it's about to come out. You know, it's, in the, it's you know, 2025. <laughs> so, again, that's cool. But I don't think it necessarily grows hobby when you are constantly, people are talking about games you they have, and you're like, hey, well, let's talk about ones that aren't out yet. Anyway, those are the top 10 annoying groups of the hobby. I'm sure you all agree. <laughs> Can I get everybody? You sure got the sleeves. You did. <laughs> I got a lot of them. Yeah. Uh, anyway, again, most of this isn't fun, but I do want our hobby to be a better place. We want things to look better. And I want people, when they come in, and we want to welcome people, and someone says, hey, are these games like Monopoly? And we say, no. yeah, they are kind of like Monopoly, but they're cooler. Things have gotten better. You love Monopoly, that's great. I got a game kind of like it. You know, things like that. Let's make this hobby a more welcoming place. <laughs> oh, I'm back here. I'm back here. There you go. Now, go out of business. All right. Okay, so thank you guys for coming. It doesn't, you can play games all night long. You know, there's lots of time. Tomorrow morning, there's a worship service that was originally scheduled for the room back there, but it's gonna be in here, because um, I need a mic. So, uh, in case you're gonna be that. But have fun, make sure you return games in time tomorrow. That's another annoying people group. People don't return games in time. <laughs> on time. Uh, but have a fun time. We're so glad you all came. Until next time, I'm Tom Basil. I'm Z Garcia. I'm Chris Yee. I'm Camilla Cleghorn. I'm Mike Lucio. Have fun punching our game. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.